Greetings, I'm Les Pollard, and welcome to Windows on the Word. We're coming to you today from the beautiful campus of Oakwood University, where we broadcast Windows on the Word. This show, Windows on the Word, is an attempt to take the Bible and our Seventh-day Adventist faith and to apply it to the contemporary issues that we all face. We seek guidance, we seek clarity, we seek illumination, because we believe that the Word has much to offer as to how we live our lives. Now, there are many, many issues today that are dividing the country. <clears throat> One of the most controversial is the Supreme Court's recent decision to reverse the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling on the right to abortion. Obviously, if you've been listening, this ruling has sparked debates, marches, division. And today, what we want to do is to see what light might Scripture and faith shed on this conversation. What should be our role? And what kind of guidance has our church provided to us in what is obviously a very personal decision. Joining me today are Chaplain Corey Rowe, an assistant professor at Oakwood University and a chaplain for the FBI, the EAP program in Huntsville. Prior to his work at Oakwood, he was a pastoral care manager and worked as a pastor in the great Allegheny West and Northeastern conferences. My other guest is Dr. Howard Weems, special assistant to the president for Biblical Foundations and an organizational psychologist who teaches in our religion faculty here at Oakwood, but he also directs the Ellen G. White Research Center here on our campus. His educational background consists of communications, theology, and psychology, and he is skilled in lecturing and conflict resolution. And if ever we needed his conflict revolution skills, it's right here on this subject <laughs> that we are taking up today. So gentlemen, recently we asked some of our female faculty members the same kinds of questions that I'll ask you now. Mm -hmm. um, what was your initial reaction, Dr. Rowe, when you heard that Roe v. Wade had been reversed by the Supreme Court? It was shock and awe mm -hmm. for me. Uh, personally, I have my wife mm -hmm. and I have three daughters. Mm -hmm. And to know that the Supreme Court could just make a law that to me personally discriminates against an individual's right mm -hmm. to procreate or mm -hmm. not to procreate, it's a very serious matter. I think it violates freedom of choice mm -hmm. that the Creator gave us, and that was removed and taken overnight. And now the ramifications are that these individuals, the, these women in our lives, daughters, mothers, and, and, and all of the women that mm -hmm. we are associated with are traumatized. Mm -hmm. And for me now, as a chaplain, how do I address that? And my main goal is to see how is it affecting them from an emotional perspective, a sociological perspective, mm -hmm. and then a theological perspective. Wow, wow. Doc, what about you? What about you, Dr. Weems? It took me aback. It also. took you back. Yeah, also. But um, I looked at it through different angles. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, I thought about the Christian right, mm -hmm. so to speak, who really means well. Mm -hmm. And there's a group out there that means well. They do. Mm -hmm. they yeah, do. And, 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 and the decision probably is in harmony with God's word in terms of being pro-life, but we're going to talk about that. Yes, we will. Some more. But in terms of choice, mm -hmm. free will that God has given us, and that's where the <coughs> tension mm -hmm. lies, you mm -hmm. know, free will. You know, do I have the option to choose? You know, freedom is, is God's gift. Mm -hmm. to humanity. Amen. Freedom is God's gift. Yeah, and although they are trying to enforce God's word, and we know that that's going to lead into some, some prophetic consequences yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Yes. later yes. on before yes. the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I, I kind of looked at it prophetically. Yes, in many yes. Ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, yeah, this was jolting, wasn't it? Yes, it mm -hmm. was. It, it was jolting, and it, <clears throat> and it happened so suddenly, right? Yes. I mean, just overnight, overnight. here we are. Um, mm -hmm. When we talk about this decision and the impact that it has had, um, I, I think both of you touched on something that, that has real ramifications for other rights that are involved, mm -hmm. but you both use the word choice. You both use yes. the word choice. Is it possible to be pro-life and pro-choice at the same time? Mm. Is that possible? <laughs> There's a tension between the two, pro-life mm -hmm. and pro-choice, uh -huh. and I believe that 
God said that we ought to multiply and yeah. replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. He did not put any restrictions on that. So that's pro-life. That's pro-life. Mm -hmm. Pro-choice now comes with the freedom of choice. I can choose to have children or I can choose not, not to. Not to have children. Should the government make a law to restrict me from doing that? And, and I think that is where the tension lies between the two. There, there, there is a healthy tension and there could be an unhealthy tension. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you cross the line and step into my space, into my lane, and tell me I cannot do something, even though it is my choice, then you are creating somehow of an oppression on me because now I am not moving about as a citizen, a law-abiding citizen mm -hmm. freely to do what I believe is right according to my beliefs and my standing in the community and in the eyes of God. Wow, wow. Yeah, what, what do yeah you think? I think politically <clears throat> uh, the term means pro-life, I'm for life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, for the life of the unborn. Mm -hmm. Uh, pro-choice is something different. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have a choice for life. So I think there's tension, mm -hmm. but I don't see that much of a difference between the two. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, we can unpack. Really. Yeah, I want to unpack that uh, well, yeah, some more. Yeah, we need to unpack that to. when we get to that <laughs> point. We want to unpack that. Yeah, I don't want, yeah. Now, now, interestingly, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has put out a statement mm -hmm. on, on our view of the unborn, right? Yes. Our view of the unborn. And as I revisited the statement, I, I, I happened to be a member of the GC Executive Committee. When we voted the statement, I read it and listened and that kind mm -hmm. of thing, but it was before this conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed at the, the statement is a very moderate centrist kind of statement, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the way mm -hmm. it, it reads. Yes. Centrist in the sense that it starts with the notion that all human beings are created in the image of God. Yes. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Um, Dr. Weems, what, what does that mean to you? The Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, male and female created he them. We're all created and gave them the image of God. Wow. Yeah. Um, what does that mean for this conversation? What does that mean? Yeah, there's so much there to unpack. Mm -hmm. We were created in God's image, which means that, that God wanted us to multiply, mm -hmm. to populate the earth, mm -hmm. not just with human beings, per mm -hmm. se, but mm -hmm. with Christian. God wanted mm -hmm. us to, to represent him, his mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in the Hebrew terms, there are two terms. I think it's one is Salem external mm -hmm. image, mm -hmm. and one is the mute mm -hmm. internal. Yes. You know, yeah. so we, God wanted us to represent him both through character, mm -hmm. you know, as well as physically. We're yeah. going to look like Christ. Yes. When he comes, we shall be like him. Amen. Mm -hmm. So God wants to populate the earth, not just the earth, but his kingdom as well. And yes. I hope I, I kind of stay yeah, with, think, without no, veering think, too much off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, <laughs> no, I, what I hear you saying is that God, by giving us this image, he gives us... Uh, uh, an outward resemblance, because mm -hmm. there's an Ellen White statement in yeah, education yeah, yeah. that says yes. everything, yeah. but also an inner being too as well, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a part of that, the image is the ability to choose. Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it was a good choice or a bad choice, yes. they had the ability to choose. What about you, um, Dr. Rowe? What, what, do you, what does it mean for this conversation? That Cre the unborn <laughs> and the image of God, what does that mean? I, I think my challenge and my struggle has always been at what point thus the unborn become human or unhuman. It took two human individuals, mm -hmm. a seed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a sperm, mm -hmm. an egg and a sperm mm -hmm. to converge That's right. so that a human life can be started. Mm -hmm. So at what point do we decide that we can terminate life by choice or by law to says, no, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very difficult decision to make. Whether you are in the judicial system, mm -hmm. you are a, a man or a woman, mm -hmm. it's a very hard decision to make. Mm -hmm. The question is, is that the right decision? They're good decisions. Mm -hmm. 
but there's the right decision. What did God say? Procreate, because we are created in the image and likeness of God. So then if we decide, if an individual decides that they want to end life, are we ending the life of that person that is created in God? Or are we ending a pregnancy? And that's a very tough question. Yeah, it's a tough ethical yeah. and biophysical question. Yeah. Yes. And so, so you can imagine now the trauma, hmm. the fear. So now you're taking us into the clinical chaplaincy yes. side mm -hmm. of this conversation. Yes, exactly. The trauma and the fear of this person, mostly females, that mm -hmm. are now in a predicament whereby they did everything to plan parenthood, and now they're deciding to have a child. But something happens. Mm -hmm. The doctors find out that there's something mm -hmm. wrong with mm -hmm. the child and the mother's life is at mm -hmm. stake. Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of like they're demonizing this situation because now it's not just about the mother's life and health. The child's life and health is at stake. And who are making these decisions? From what I've heard so far, men are telling women how to take care of their bodies what to keep and what not to keep. And this is, goes back to that statement that you made, my body, my, my choice. choice. Mm -hmm. But then in the spectrum of things, what does God say? Mm -hmm. God values all life because he's the creator of life. Mm -hmm. So now how do we put this into perspective and how do we minister on that level? From a chaplain's perspective, pastoral care and counseling perspective, I deal with where are you emotionally? Mm -hmm. How has this affected you? Mm -hmm. The four feeling words, sad, mm -hmm. happy, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. or afraid. Wow. I believe women Would you are say those Would you say those sad, sad. Mm -hmm. happy, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. or afraid. Mm -hmm. I believe women are dealing with all of these. Mm -hmm. And at one moment, they're dealing with everyone at the same time. Now, the question is, how do I come in in the system? First, I need to know, tell me what is going on. What has your experience been? Every thought has a feeling. Mm -hmm. And whatever that feeling is, I see, okay, how are you handling that now? Mm -hmm. what is, what is the, how are you handling that emotion, those feelings? What is your support system? Socially, mm -hmm. do you get it from your husband, the father of the child, mm -hmm. a community? Where do you get that from? Mm -hmm. And then the theological perspective is, how does your faith give you support? Mm -hmm. Not just from a Christian perspective. It could be Hindu, Muslim, whatever. Mm -hmm. The fact is, everybody has a faith system. Whether they believe or not, it's a faith. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe in Yahweh <laughs> or whoever you want to believe in, that is your choice. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to a woman's body, they're saying, nope, that's not your choice. We'll make the decision. And therefore voiding her and actually erasing her as a human being. Wow, wow. wow. You know, that, that, that's profound, um, Corey. I, I, I would even add another factor mm -hmm. here. If the law is the law, mm -hmm. and if abortion is now murder, Mm. then the caregiver who supports that, the physician, the clinician, the, the nurse practitioner, whomever it is, yes. could be subject to prosecution. Yes, yeah. they're demonized, criminalized. Right, criminal, criminalized. Mm -hmm. So you're criminalizing caregivers now. Yes. So, so this has, has weighty, weighty impact. When I come back, I'm going to ask each of you, and I'll start with you, Dr. Williams, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you to respond to a statement that is in the statement mm -hmm. on the life of the unborn published mm -hmm. by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in October of 2019. Mm -hmm. Part of the gift that God has given us humans is procreation, mm -hmm. the ability to participate in creation along with the author of life. Yes. This gift, this sacred gift should always be valued and treasured. Uh, um, in God's original plan, every pregnancy should be the result of the expression of love between a man and a woman committed to each other in marriage. Mm -hmm. A pregnancy should be wanted and each baby should be loved, valued, mm -hmm. and nurtured even before birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, since the entrance of sin, Satan has made intentional efforts to mar the image of God by defacing all of God's gifts, including the gift of procreation. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's that, Satan's that attack. Mm -hmm. Consequently, so here's the thing. Consequently, individuals are at times faced with difficult dilemmas and decisions regarding pregnancy. And so the question I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you, Dr. Weems, mm -hmm. is what are the options left to a decider when the ideal circumstances did not produce the pregnancy? Okay. And we'll pick that up when we come back. You are watching Windows on the Word, and we'll be back in just a minute. I have the privilege to be working at this great institution, Oko University, serving the diverse population. In other words, I am serving. And what I do, I do it with joy, I do it with passion, because I see many students that come from different parts of the world. They enter to learn, and they depart to serve. Welcome back, everyone, to Windows on the Word, and we are in a deep discussion on the Supreme Court decision of June 24, 2022, to reverse mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade and to remove from the general public a woman's right, as guaranteed under the Constitution, mm -hmm. to an abortion. And now that mm. decision is out with states, and it's wreaking havoc upon families. Um, Dr. Weems, I've... I've want to come back to a question that we, mm -hmm. we exited with. Mm -hmm. The question is, based on the Seventh-day Adventist statement on, on the unborn, mm -hmm. a pregnancy is a wonderful gift. Mm. It should take place in the context of marriage. And it kind of lays out what the ideal circumstances are. It mm -hmm. also acknowledges that sin can mar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that process. And then sometimes a child is coming. Mm -hmm. And here mm -hmm. the child comes, and these ideal circumstances are not in place. Yes. What options do, do, do would you say a decider has based on the Word of God? What options, and you notice I said a decider, yeah. not, mm. or deciders. <laughs> mm -hmm. That could be the lady, mm -hmm. depending upon her age. Mm -hmm. That could be the parents and the lady. Let's say she's 15, she's a minor. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I use the language carefully. What options do the deci does the decider and the deciders or the deciders have in this kind of situation? Mm. Yeah, I think, Doc, uh, the ideal, as you stated earlier, is to, um, is to obey God's word, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And if I had to counsel and advise someone, and I've had to do that before, mm -hmm. Doc, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was a student I had to mm -hmm. uh, advise. So the first option is to try to obey God's word. Mm -hmm. To me, that's primary. As a Christian counselor. As a Christian counselor, mm -hmm. you know, I need to stick with God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, and where a person had violated God's word, and mm -hmm. then that's a different story. And then I try to, you know, redemption is, is, mm -hmm. is the name of the mm -hmm. game. But I would try to advise them as to what God's word says. And earlier we talked about mm -hmm. the image, mm -hmm. you know, of God. And when does life, when is the origin of life? Is it at conception mm -hmm. or is it at birth? Important question, too. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, or sometime and, and, in between. We have to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Or sometime uh, where in between. does it start? Mm -hmm. And we do have examples in God's Word, I think, in the Psalm. I don't know if we're ready for the Psalm. Psalm 139. Yeah, 139. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. You know, talks about before I was formed, mm -hmm. God knew me. Jeremiah mm -hmm. said before. Knit me together in my mother's womb. My mother's womb. And John the Baptist said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was filled with the Holy Ghost before birth. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. now that, yes. One day we need to talk about that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> And yes, after indeed. the conception uh, of Jesus Christ himself, it was mm -hmm. a celebration mm -hmm. of life. So the Bible tends to suggest that the origin of life is at conception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so I would try and educate and try to advise based upon that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will find something doable um, uh, if, the, if the person decides to go forward mm -hmm. with the pregnancy and, 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 have, and go through with the birthing of, mm -hmm. of the child, and then a system should be in place. Right now, we're still Adventists. To me, we're kind of reactionary, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. know? <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in many ways. Mm -hmm. You tell, know, we don't have the that. systems in place. 
-hmm. You know, if we encourage you to go through now what? with the pregnancy, you know, now are you going to leave me now out now here? You're going to hang me out to dry or, or you have resources? And that's the name of the game, resources mm -hmm. in place. You know, if I to say help. go through with it and then I need to be able to provide the resources for you and the husband, for the family. So, um, and yeah, considering that most people are people of color who do that and they are between the ages of 18 and 29 it blew me away the mm. most people and who get yeah may uh, i add another statistic doc 70 percent of black children mm -hmm. uh last mm. year were born out of wedlock wow 70 percent mm -hmm. seven out of ten births of black children mm. were out of wedlock births mm -hmm. so so and Others may talk about this in the abstract, maybe sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for us, we're talking about a community in mm -hmm. crisis around this mm -hmm. issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how we handle it becomes important. So when we talk about this issue, Dr. Williams, we're mm -hmm. talking about a community in crisis, right? If seven mm -hmm. out of ten of our children are born mm -hmm. to unwed mothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Rowe, how do we help these families, though? Yes. If you're talking 70% mm -hmm. and we're... And our statement says, the Seventh-day Adventist Church statement says, we support the life of the unborn. Mm -hmm. We believe it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Dr. Weems had mentioned Jeremiah and mm -hmm. Psalms, yes. mm -hmm. where God talks about before you were born. Correct. What do we do after they're born? And, and what should be the church's role? And, and, and at some point, we, we're going to talk about the whole mm -hmm. disciplinary process mm -hmm. yes. that, that we've all experienced and Correct. witnessed and even been party to. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I believe that the quotation that you read or the statistics mm -hmm. that 70% mm -hmm. of the African-American society, their children are born out of wedlock. And that is a crisis, that is an epidemic. That's an epidemic. And I've done some, some research as it relates to the effect of an absent father, mm. which is what happens to that mother and that child that is born out of wedlock? Where is the support from the father? Because men are not made some people say are they or mm. are they born mm. <laughs> being a father is a responsibility mm -hmm. god holds that every man has a responsibility mm -hmm. to take care of their offspring mm -hmm. we as brothers we must hold that brother accountable mm -hmm. for that child mm -hmm. and we must also make sure that we can support the mother mm -hmm. because they're going to need that help mm -hmm because there's at least 40 to 50% of them do not take care of their children mm -hmm. after they've been born. Mm -hmm. So there is a deficit of parenting mm -hmm. that takes place. It takes two to make a child, but mm -hmm. only one parent takes care of them, and that's usually the mother. She is cumbered with all of this care while she loves that child. Now the issue is, where does the community come in? Mm. The community meaning not just the home of this, this mother, but the family mm -hmm. of this mother with this new child that has been introduced to the family. Mm -hmm. And then it filters into the church. What is the church doing about it? Which is also another area where the church should be more involved in that. Mm -hmm. Then the larger community that has all the resources, uh, the care, mm -hmm. medical care, uh, uh, literature and all that stuff to support and to help that family. The problem that I saw with this decree, this, this law, is that now you're putting a mother, a prospective mother, in a box. Do not step out of this box because if you do, mm -hmm. we're, prosecuting. we're gonna prosecute you. So is this directed, with that statistic, mm -hmm. is this really directed at African Americans? Mm. Or is it directed at a larger community mm -hmm. made up mm -hmm. of different races and, and, and ethnicities and nationalities? So we have to look ourselves in the face as African American men. Okay, where do I come in? Having a home 
that has both parents gives that child a better chance of survival, mm -hmm. a better yeah. chance of getting the right example and the right model to now go out into the community and do not actually uh, uh, continue. I will say there's generational things that happen. Mm -hmm. Individuals have children out of wedlock for generation, generation. Someone needs to stop that. Mm -hmm. How do you stop it? Not through condemnation, not mm -hmm. through judgment, mm -hmm. not to excommunicating a person from mm -hmm. church or society, mm -hmm. but how can we help you to raise this child? Because one of the things that I have learned, mm -hmm. no child is an accident by God. Mm -hmm. Everybody, God, you are here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Whether the, the parents needed that child, the father did not want that child, the mother wanted it, but the people around her decided that, you know what, this will not be good for you. It would mess up your career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God does not make mistakes. And therefore, while we make mistakes, God planned for that child. Amen. So therefore, we have a responsibility as professionals, as chaplains, as pastors, community leaders, to now look out for a member of the community because that family adds to the community. They add to everything that the community is about. It takes a tribe to mm -hmm. do what? To raise a to child. Raise a child. To raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to keep that perspective in mind and we have to make sure that we are a part of those that are gonna help and not condemn and how can we assist this mother now to move forward? What happens to a mother who gets raped? And now she cannot abort that child. But guess who planned for that child? God did. Mm. <laughs> the question now becomes, how much pressure are we putting on that mother now to make a decision? Wow. We're, we're putting a tremendous amount of pressure on her. And then the culpability is that, hey, I aborted probably five, 10 years ago. Mm. I mm -hmm. should be locked up. I should be in jail. Wow. So the trauma that I deal with as a chaplain is to see where they are. I do not immediately go to the sociological piece mm -hmm. or the theological piece. Mm -hmm. I go to where are you from an emotional standpoint? Mm -hmm. How can I support you? Where are you hurting? Mm -hmm. How can I help? Then mm -hmm. the next piece is the community that you said. Mm -hmm. Will the community ostracize them, condemn them, judge them, and throw them in jail? But then this mother may have had other children. Who's gonna take care of those children? Is the community gonna come to the rescue? Is government gonna come to the rescue? And then the church, what part do we play mm -hmm. in making sure that that mother, that child gets all the support that they need? Because to be honest, that is our daughter, <laughs> that is our son. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is our daughter. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do about it? So it is a complex issue that yes. each area, government, community, family, and the individual has to take responsibility because God is gonna hold each of us accountable. Amen. Wow, wow, yeah. support systems. Doctor. Yeah, a support system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think there are pros and cons mm -hmm. of the divo of the abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, an abortion is not the end of the story. Mm. Right, and looking at it from a psychological perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, according to the That's stats. That's the end of the story. Yeah, mm -hmm. according to stats, mm -hmm. that mother would suffer depression. Yes. She would need wow. clinical intervention. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes the lifetime, you know, what if I had, you know, kept mm -hmm. my child? What if? And many times the father will too. So, I, so we need to be careful as we walk this tightrope. Mm-hmm you know, to explain yes. all that is involved in mm -hmm. getting an abortion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and again, provide, you ask another question, how, what do we do? We sub mm -hmm. uh, um, provide support systems. There's an elder in the church, if it's a male, or mm -hmm. there's a deaconess, or there's someone special in that person's life yes. who can kind of mentor mm -hmm. uh, those individuals. So that means that family life will have to change some. <laughs> You know, as we know it, family yes. life directors will have mm -hmm. to change as we know it. Uh, community services. Yes. You know, we have to change the way we do community service now mm -hmm. uh, because we're in a whole different place. We're whole in a whole different, different place, place and it's going to take a village. It's going to take all of us uh, to rise to a different level, I think. Well, well, when we come back, we'll talk about that different level that we need to get to because I think mm -hmm. it's important for us as a church 
as mm. a church family, as a church community, and as people of faith, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to find ways to be a source of relief mm -hmm. and support to families who are dealing with mm -hmm. an unwanted pregnancy mm -hmm. Yes, in these instances. So we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about how we can how we can try to respond to our larger community as well because mm -hmm. we have a role there with so many of our young people having children that were unplanned. So we'll see you when we come back. Windows on the Word, thank you for tuning in and we'll be right back. I came to Oakwood University following the call of God and my passion is to help uh, people connect with God. I just want to be here for those moments, available for God, a tool for Him for such a time as this. So that's why I'm here at Oakwood University. Well, welcome back to Windows on the Word, and we are now wrapping up our conversation, this is the last phase of our discussion, on a very important topic, the topic of abortion and the Supreme Court's decision um, in June of 2022 to mm -hmm. outlaw abortion, to remove the right to access for abortion. I want to pick up on just something, Dr. Weems, that as we mm -hmm. were talking in our last segment, you, you talked about the experience of abortion and I recognize that your wife is a, is a nurse practitioner, et cetera, so I'm sure you all have had mm -hmm. conversations both mm -hmm. from a medical as well as a psychological perspective. Mm -hmm. But you said something. You said it's not the end of the story. Right. Once we, right. you know, it's not like a drink of water, right? You right. take a drink of water mm -hmm. and you move mm -hmm. on. Yes. But t could you unpack that a little bit? What do you mean? That's not the end of the story. For a young person who's listening to us mm -hmm. and contemplating what they should do, Mm -hmm. or a person who has already had an abortion, mm -hmm. a family, a, a, a lady, she and her husband, mm -hmm. it could be any mm -hmm. group of people. Um, what do you say that would offer hope because it's not the end of this? The world doesn't tell us. It's, the world acts like that's the end of the story. Right, right. And again, this is a very sensitive conversation yes, and I always try to measure my words, yes, okay. mm -hmm. you know, when okay. we talk about it. Uh, because most people think that once you get rid of the evidence or the, the fetus or yeah. the, the baby. And it's over. Yeah, it's all over. Mm -hmm. But that's only the beginning of another journey. You mm -hmm. know, because abortion goes against the natural order of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and you cannot kill, uh, and I hope I'm not being too graphic, mm -hmm. without consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, so you may ask God to forgive you, and he's, he will. He's gracious. Mm. You know, if you confess your sins, he, he's just and faithful mm -hmm. to forgive mm -hmm. us of our sins and mm -hmm. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. But there are mental and psychological consequences, you know, of that devo uh, uh, abortion. Uh, because according to the word of God, uh, Jesus himself, God himself formulates uh, the embryo mm -hmm. and develops it you know, and, and we're talking about worldviews now, the yes, importance yes. of the worldview that mm -hmm. you have that would allow you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is allowing you to, to extract a developing fetus or developing embryo mm -hmm. from your body? Is, is something allowing you to go to that extent without uh, feeling guilty or feeling like you've done something wrong? So may, may, I, may, I, so, may I be that person then? Let me be okay. that person so you can respond to that. So. So I'm 15 and, so I'll give you a number of scenarios. Okay. So I'm 15 and I was molested on my way home from the high school basketball game. Mm -hmm. A month later, I find out that I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that might be a reason. A physician says to me that there is a fetal abnormality, right? Mm -hmm. That this fetus will be born without a brain stem. That's mm -hmm. another circumstance mm -hmm. that might make me contemplate mm -hmm. abortion. Mm -hmm. um, another is we've had five children and we weren't expecting another, mm -hmm. a husband and wife, and they say. So, so each of those circumstances 
might trigger mm -hmm. what I think I need to, to do. To, yeah. to. But you're saying whatever those circumstances are, that's normally not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? yes, that's I am. That's normally yeah. not the end of the and story. And that's why it's a tough choice, and it's a very sensitive mm -hmm. uh, conversation that we are having here. Uh, but I would suggest that, um, that we educate, you know, mm -hmm. that we educate. Although circumstances may be unfavorable, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. incest, maybe uh, a rape, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. you have to take care of the mental health, you know, of the mother, mm -hmm. you know, because it's going to impact the mental health of the fetus as well, mm -hmm. of the embryo mm -hmm. as wow. well. So it's, 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 now you, it's you holistic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's all listen. Now you yeah. mentioned the mother. Yeah. I, I need to ask you a question that I asked the ladies. Is mm -hmm. this a woman's issue? Uh, well, <laughs> well, well. Let, I can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 jump <laughs> in. Jump well, in. Let me say, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. Is, is this a woman's issue? Yeah. I was. I was reading some research, Doc. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Seventy-five men collected. You know, and asked the question. Mm. You know, um, would you? encourage your wife or your girlfriend to have an abortion mm -hmm. you know only one said no in this research and i send it to you if you need oh, me to oh, send no, it no, to no, you no. I'm, I'm mostly to, I'm men yeah mostly men, men are encouraging said, the female especially oh, if you the look men at are saying have the abortion yes yeah the oh, men oh, between the ages of 18 and 29 so mm -hmm. young men 75 were asked yeah and only one said no i would encourage and the other said well well, about two said I would go along with the wishes of the mother. Hmm. Really? Yeah. So wow. to me, that was interesting. Yeah, very much so. You know, mm -hmm. but if you're a young man in college uh, mm -hmm. pursuing a career, it blows you away if you are a sophomore, for instance, and your girlfriend comes to you and say, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. So, mm -hmm. And you know what are we going to do? I mean, that's, that's you know that's reality. Mm -hmm. But most young men are not ready for that responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if they are mm -hmm. uh, pursuing their career. Wow. Yeah. So, Corey, you uh, want to? But did I answer? Did I? <laughs> yeah, of course. Now you know you, you're a military you know, man. You yeah. said you should have thought about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the first thing that came to mind. You should have thought. I know, but I oftentimes, what you were thinking. oftentimes, military we, man, you yes, say, hey, you should have thought about, about that. that before. Yeah, before. You know, one of the things I, I, I realized that because we're not women, we are at a deficit mm -hmm. yeah. to understand that's true. how mm -hmm. women feel about aborting a child. Yes. We have no idea what that's what like. What that feels like. Uh, watching my wife give birth mm -hmm. has, is still blowing my mind to this day to mm -hmm. see that what we did as husband and wife, yes. this is what we created, another yes. human being. Amen. And now the time has come that that life has to be terminated. Wow. I agree with you that it's never over once that decision is made. Mm -hmm. One of the things I have learned that, that I always keep in mind that when I, I am at the hospital uh, as a healthcare chaplain or when I'm on campus and we have Someone students to come to me, mm -hmm. whether male or female, and they have a situation that mm -hmm. somebody's pregnant, mm -hmm. I am realizing now that that person is dealing with grief. Mm. To make a decision to terminate a life is a very difficult decision mm -hmm. because you think about, wow, what if my mother would have done that hmm. to me? Mm -hmm. so, so there's a guilty complex already connected to that. Mm -hmm. But then the mother has to deal with that decision. That young man, because of his career and whatever else he had planned, and now is going to get derailed because he has now become a father. Mm -hmm. The child is not born yet. But, but it's real. But it is a, it's a real baby. Mm -hmm. It's a real human being. Mm -hmm. So the grief, whether it's real or perceived, when a woman is pregnant, a girl is pregnant, and you are the male, there is grieving because now, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I should have made the right choice, and mm -hmm. I did not. But mm -hmm. because of our sinful nature, mm -hmm. we make a lot of bad choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as I said before, we may decide to do something because of freedom of choice, mm -hmm but we are still responsible for the consequences. Mm -hmm. And even though because of a mother's health, the baby's health, and the decision that you make, we still have to live with that. So grieving is either real or perceived. How do we handle that? 
as a chaplain, I have to walk with that person mm -hmm. through ministry of presence. Mm -hmm. I have to assess to see where they are from those four emotional words, mm -hmm. happy, sad, and usually they're sad, they're angry, and they're afraid. Mm -hmm. What are people gonna think about me? Am mm -hmm. I gonna be ostracized? Mm -hmm. So there's always a ramification for that decision. There are consequences, as you said. Mm -hmm. You may make the decision, but a consequence will come whether that decision was good or bad. There are mm -hmm. consequences. Mm -hmm. How do I live with that and how do I support this mother? How do I support this young man? I do not give them the answers whether to abort or not to abort. That is their decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm there to give them comfort, empathy. And to walk through the circumstances. And walk through that, those circumstances without judgment or condemnation. Mm -hmm. It's grace and mercy that we must learn how to exercise. So my question for both of you now, mm -hmm. for people who are watching now, mm -hmm in a local church yes and they just heard that their favorite young lady mm. leads the choir teaches in the sabbath school everybody knows she's destined for great things mm. they've just found out she's expecting mm. out of wedlock how do we help the pastor the elders the deaconesses help her and her family. Yes. How, how do we do that? What do we say to them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How would, yeah, I think I would visit. I had something uh, similar to that to happen before mm -hmm. when I was pastoring in New York, but mm -hmm. not quite at that level. But I, w I visited the young lady mm -hmm. and I had a discussion. Difference. Makes a big difference. Yeah, one on one. Okay, what are you feeling? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you want this? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and in this situation, uh, she wanted to go through. I said, okay, considering you want to go through with it, mm -hmm. uh, would you have a problem in just rededicating your life mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Jesus Christ through mm -hmm. baptism, mm -hmm. you and your, mm -hmm. and the father? Mm -hmm. You know, they're both unmarried. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, no, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then can we plan a wedding around that same day? You know, wow. so, <laughs> wow. so what I did, I baptized them both, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then the following uh, week we had a wedding. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, so, that's a, that's yeah. a great so outcome. once you find out what they want to do. What mm -hmm. is it that they and provide so, information? So, so we need to say to the elders, you, mm -hmm. you, it starts with a conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. A visit. A visit to this, the young lady, depending mm -hmm. upon age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Conversation with the parents, yeah, right. Because you and the young man, and you the young visit man. the young man, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I also believe, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Pollard and, and Dr. Weems, is that mm -hmm. the person doing the visitation must be skilled in the area of pastoral care okay. mm -hmm. and counseling. Okay. You just mm -hmm. cannot send any person there, right, right, right. Because right. if you're coming and all you're bringing is Bible, mm -hmm. and you're not dealing with the person's feelings. And emotions, their mm -hmm. experience in that their moment, their experience, their social support mm -hmm. system, then you're going to shut them down because now they're seeing you as somebody coming and doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to coming do that. Coming with judgment. Coming with judgment and condemnation. Christ never did anything like that. Mm -hmm. He actually went side by side with them, He ministered to them, He listened to them. Mm -hmm. And then after he listened to them, mm. he showed them his love. He valued them. And we have to make sure, and I believe you said that earlier, mm -hmm. family life in the church, the eldership and leaders, it has to be revamped to understand mm. this is the society we're living in. We mm. cannot keep unwed mothers and their children out of the church. Mm -hmm. Christ said, suffer the little children to, to come, come unto, unto me. me. The children had parents and usually it's the mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we have, we become advocates and we support them. We may not, appre we may not approve of their behavior, but we support them and love them anyhow because if it was not for the grace of God, mm -hmm. my daughter or somebody else's daughter would be in that position. How would I treat them? So we have, to be make, we have to make sure that we are not partial. We make sure that we show grace and mercy and then help that person from that emotional perspective because that's going to go deep and wide. Amen. I recall going to the hospital one time visiting a mother 
that had just had a newborn, but it was stillborn. Oh, boy. That mother was not only dealing with the death of that child, mm. but with the death of a child whose life she took in abortion. Mm. So she's dealing with two deaths. I see. She has not forgotten that one, Lost. and now she thinks this is punishment for what punishment happened to that. that. It's yeah. compounded. <laughs> yeah. So, so wow. again, mm. we cannot begin to scratch the surface mm -hmm. when it comes to what are women feeling, mm -hmm. mothers that go through situations like this. Passing a law, what about the after, the fallout? We're not dealing with the fallout. We say, oh, y'all take care of that. <laughs> So we have to do better. We have to do a better job. We have to educate, mm -hmm. and we have to come like alongside of them and be advocates and support them from those perspectives. Yeah, and, and, and may I just add too? Please, yeah, please. that's why I went to visit the young lady one on one to keep it from getting to the floor of the church, the board, mm. uh, as much as possible, and to keep it from the business meeting mm. <laughs> to disarm. <laughs> well, I, there's a lot What's I can say about that one. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but let me just say, gentlemen, I, I think you've steered us in a great direction mm. because these things will happen. Yes. It's not like they're not going to happen. That's mm -hmm. correct. And how do we respond? Do we, do we reflect the nurture and the care of Christ? And we honor, and consistent with our Seventh-day Adventist position, mm -hmm. we honor their right to make a choice, mm -hmm. but we're there for them if they choose. Yes. And that's to the carry that child to term. Mm -hmm. We have to be there to be the community that will be supportive and loving and nurturing mm -hmm. as they raise this new life. And who knows what God will do with that child? Mm -hmm. I Amen. think you said that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who and knows a, what God will do? And, uh, yes, and the last thing is that we have to do a better job with men's ministry. Mm. Uh, men have to be taught, they have to Amen. be nurtured, they have to be empowered, Amen. and they must also understand that they carry a heavy responsibility. Mm -hmm. God did not call Eve. He said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? So we have to make sure that we have a venue where men can come and when we can help them and educate them, the Amen. rites of passage, I call it passage right, that they right. have in our mm -hmm. motherland. Right. We need some more of that here. We do where we can train our young men to be responsible, to be ethical, and to know that you have a heavy responsibility. You can stop the bleeding or it can continue through you. And we need to support them and encourage them and pray with them. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. I, I love your earlier statement and we're gonna end on mm -hmm. it, that young men, mm -hmm. males are born, but men are made. Yes. Mm -hmm. Males are born, but men yes. are made. And it takes other men to, to make them. a man. Well, today we have had a wonderful discussion. I thank you mm -hmm. so very much, You're each welcome. of you, both Dr. Rowe and Dr. Weems. I thank you so much for your guidance that you've given to us on how to navigate mm -hmm. an unexpected president, uh, pregnancy in the light of uh, the Supreme Court's decision about abortion. Well, gentlemen, I thank you so very much for your contributions. Mm -hmm. You have provided specific guidance mm -hmm. on how we as co members of a community, yes. a community of faith, can help not only those persons who are expecting children unexpectedly mm -hmm. in our community, but also beyond our community. Mm -hmm. And so today on Windows on the Word, we've looked at this very sensitive issue and we've looked at it through Christian lenses. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Windows on the Word. We'll see you next time when we take on another topic, a contemporary topic, and look at it through the windows mm -hmm. of God's Word. God bless you.